Around the onset of the 20th century, Arctic grayling went from being the most abundant fish in Michigan waters to being completely gone. The cold water fish was found mostly in the northern lower peninsula and was the backbone of how Michigan's fishing industry began. During the past 100 years, there have been many grayling restoration attempts. All have failed except one. What led to grayling's demise, the reintroduction challenges, and the current initiative that's committed to making sure this native species thrives in our waters again? Here's 13 on your side's Brent Ashcroft with Our Michigan Life. They're gorgeous. Long dorsal fin on their back. Iridescent purples and blues. They are about as Michigan as, as Michigan gets. You're watching ghosts swim. The fact that we have a town named after them, I think speaks to the importance of the fish historically. Sleek shaped souls, breathtaking entities. They were very prolific. Floating before us, begging. There have been many attempts to restore populations of Arctic grayling. To return from beyond. This is not an instant gratification type of project. And reclaim everything they lost. It's not extinct but it's extirpated. In the late 1800s, Michigan started suffering a tragic loss. Grayling kind of had a triple threat. Unregulated fishing ran rampant. The Arctic grayling was both an attractive game fish and a popular commercial food. There were stories of train cars being loaded with grayling and moved into big cities downstate. It was the era when Michigan pine became important. As tall trees. Miles upon miles upon miles of virgin timber. Tumbled. Used the streams to float those logs down to the sawmills. Ecosystems were destroyed. That process essentially wiped out the habitat for the native spawning fish that were there, including the grayling and new fish species were introduced. Brook trout are, are native, brown trout are not. The brown trout would prey on the grayling. The populations were critically low. By 1936. That's the last documented fish. The native species was no more. Essentially 2016 to today. A renewed effort to bring grayling back is drawing upon lessons learned from past attempts. What they were trying to do was reintroduce a fish into a, an environment that was no longer conducive. Michigan's Arctic Grayling Initiative is a statewide collaboration. We have over 45 groups. That won't give up until this icon is home. That's exciting stuff. They have a new approach. Starting with a habitat evaluation which requires a dedicated the Little River Band working primarily in the streams, us assisting knowledgeable partner. The Manistee River right here runs directly through the middle of Little River's reservation, so there's that historic connection. The tribe knew that the Arctic grayling only existed in two of the lower 48 states, Michigan and Montana. It's worked out there by using RSI technology. A remote site incubator. They're glorified five gallon buckets. Put those eggs in the egg tray. With PVC hose and tubing. You get the water flowing through. A gallon a minute. And grayling will hatch within, you know, a couple of weeks of putting them in. They don't leave that water while they're larval. They imprint and they know where to return. Then they're able to survive from that point forward and reproduce on their own. That's the ultimate goal. We thought we could duplicate that success, bring it to Michigan. But obstacles arose. Montana has, um, you know, a little higher gradient stream systems. They're in the mountains. And brown trout and brook trout are prevalent in most of our cold water streams. Grayling once flourished in the Manistee and Osabal rivers. The tribe is continuing its research to determine if they can survive there again. If it's a high brown trout population, it probably won't be a, a high priority for reintroduction. While conducting habitat assessments on several other Michigan waterways. Evaluating some of the tributaries to the Upper Manistee River to make sure that they fit the criteria. The tribe is narrowing it down to the most suitable stream or watershed using extreme patience. This may be something that 
expands a lot larger across the state. And fierce attention to detail. The whole idea is to introduce grayling where we believe they're going to have the highest chance of success. Driven by the passion for the prize. I think this will be huge to Michigan. This group's work is nonstop, daunting. It's going to take years to be successful. Along the way, small victories are being celebrated. All these pieces are in place. That's important because it's not easy bringing ghosts back to life. Giving people the opportunity to go out and catch a grayling in Michigan would be fantastic because it hasn't happened for almost 100 years. To date, no Arctic grayling have been reintroduced into Michigan streams and rivers, but crucial work around the state is continuing. Michigan State University is currently performing a critical experiment. They are hosting artificial stream environment trials. They involve incubating grayling eggs along with live brown and brook trout hoping to find a way for them all to coexist. And members of the initiative are also making trips to Alaska to get live grayling, bring them back to the Marquette State Fish Hatchery in the UP, where a brood stock is being maintained. 2021 is year five of the challenging reintroduction process. Group believes it could take a total of 10 to 15 years before Arctic grayling becomes self-sustaining again in our state. And if you'd like to learn more about the Arctic grayling initiative, or if you want to donate to help the effort, you can check out the web version of the story at 13onyourside.com.